The last time we negotiated something like this, and as you know, it's always been a problem for our country. They get together and they create a series of documents that nobody has been able to read because it was it was just done. Now you tell me who can read that quickly. It takes a long time to read it. For the last eight years, deep defense cuts have undermined our national security. How old are and they just if you look at what's taken out, they've hallowed our readiness as a military unit and put America at really grave risk. My highest duty is to keep America safe. Nothing more important. The omnibus bill reverses this dangerous defense. As crazy as it's been, as difficult as it's been, as much opposition to the military as we've had from the Democrats, and it has been tremendous. I try to explain to them, you know, the military is for Republicans and Democrats and everybody else. It's for everybody. But we have tremendous opposition to creating really what will be the far, by far, the strongest military that we've ever had. We've had that from the Democrats. So if we take something for the military, they want something for, in many cases, things that are really a wasted sum of money. Therefore, as a matter of national security, I've signed this omnibus budget bill. There are a lot of things that I'm unhappy about in this bill. There are a lot of things that we shouldn't have had in this bill, but we were, in a sense, forced, if we want to build our military, we were forced to have. There are some things that we should have in the bill. But I say to Congress, I will never sign another bill like this again. I'm not going to do it again. Nobody read it. It's only hours old. Some people don't even know what it is. $1.3 trillion. It's the second largest ever. President Obama signed one that was actually larger, which I'm sure he wasn't too happy with either. But in this case, it became so big because we need to take care of our military. And because the Democrats, who don't believe in that, added things that they wanted in order to get their votes. We have to get rid of the filibuster rule. We have to get rid of the filibuster rule and go to 51 votes in the Senate if we're going to have really sustained, continued success. DACA recipients have been treated extremely badly by the Democrats. We wanted to include DACA. We wanted to have them in this bill. 800,000 people. And actually, it could even be more. And we wanted to include DACA in this bill. The Democrats would not do it. They would not do it. To prevent the omnibus situation from ever happening again, I'm calling on Congress to give me a line-item veto for all government spending bills. And the Senate must end. They must end the filibuster rule and get down to work. We have to get a lot of great legislation approved. And without the filibuster rule, it'll happen just like magic. I want to address the situation on border security, which I call national defense. I call it stopping drugs from pouring across our border. And I call it illegal immigration. It's all of those things. But national defense is a very important two words, because by having a strong border system, including a wall, we are in a position militarily that is very advantageous. And the border we've worked very hard on. We have a lot of uh, really, by any standard, a lot, but not by this standard, but we're going to make it go a long way. We have a lot of money coming to the border, and it will be coming over a period of time. We funded the initial down payment of $1.6 billion. We're going to be starting work literally on Monday on not only some new wall, not enough, but we're working on that very quickly. 
but also fixing existing walls and existing acceptable fences. There are some areas that you have to see through. You have to be able to see through the other side in order to see what's coming. And in many cases, it's not a pretty picture when you look, but you have to be able to see it. So we have $1.6 billion for the wall. That'll start immediately. Uh, this is a short-term funding, but it's immediate. Starts immediately. And I'd we like have many elements in the bill that we wanted. Just to look at a few of them, uh, we're providing $654.6 billion in total discretionary funding for defense. It's a record. All records for defense. There will be nobody that says that our military is going to be depleted, like they've been saying over the last long period of time. Long period of time. Frankly, beyond President Obama. That won't be happening. We're spending a lot of money on nuclear, our nuclear systems, to upgrade and, in some cases, brand new, whether it's submarines, nuclear submarines, and others. So we'll have, by far, the most powerful nuclear force on Earth, and it'll be absolutely in perfect shape and condition. And hopefully, praise be to God, we don't ever have to use it. But there will be nobody that's even close. So while we're very disappointed in the 1.3 trillion, nobody more disappointed than me because the number is so large, it'll start coming down. We had no choice but to fund our military because we have to have, by far, the strongest military in the world. And this will be, by far, the strongest military that we've ever had. So when you look at all of these pages, a lot of that is devoted, a lot, to the military. I just want to thank members of Congress for working so hard. While we can be disappointed in some ways, we have to also know that there are a lot of strings pulling everybody in different directions. The Republican senators, the Republican congressmen and women have been steadfast on their fight for the border and steadfast for their fight on the military. We're also spending $6 billion on, as you know, various forms of drug control, helping people that are addicted. It's a terrible problem, but this will be also — this will be a, a record. We'll be suing certain drug companies for what they've done with the opioids. And we'll be bringing the suits at a federal level. The level of drugs that are being put out there and the, the power of this addiction is hard to believe. People go to the hospital for a period of a week and they come out, they're drug addicts. There has to be a better way. Doctors are way down now in their orders of the opioids, way down. That's a great thing. We're also looking for, in our research funds, we're looking for a medicine that can stop the pain without the addiction so that people aren't going to become addicted to these incredible drugs. So that's part of what we have. We're going to have $6 billion in having to do with opioids and other problems that this country and, in fact, the world is having with drugs. So. We're extremely proud of what we've been able to do when it comes to our military. Our military will be far superior than to any military anywhere in the world. That's very important for us. You see the players out there. You see what we're dealing with. We are very happy with what's happened with opioids. We're very happy with what's happened with certain elements of the border not happy with $1.6 billion, but it does start the wall, and we will make that $1.6 billion go very, very far. It's going to go very far. 
I can tell you this, and I say this to DACA recipients, that the Republicans are with you. They want to get your situation taken care of. The Democrats fought us. They just fought every single inch of the way. They did not want DACA in this bill. And as you know, DACA is also tied to the wall for the major funding, the $25 billion for wall and other things. So I think that'll be coming up very soon. But I do want the Hispanic community to know and DACA recipients to know that Republicans are much more on your side than the Democrats who are using you for their own purposes. With that being said, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, we're very proud of many of the items that we've been able to get. We're very disappointed that in order to fund the military, we had to give up things where we consider, in many cases, them to be bad or them to be a waste of money. But that's the way, unfortunately, right now the system works. But we have a great country. We are going to have the greatest military we've ever had. And lots of good things are happening. The trade situation we'll be talking about next week. We have many trade deals, not only the deal being made on South Korea, which looks like it's very close to being finalized, but many other countries are now negotiating fair trade deals with us. So we'll be rolling them out as you see them. And part of the reason, frankly, that we're able to do that is the fact that we have the tariffs on steel and the tariffs on aluminum, because it showed how unfair some of these trade deals that have been in existence for many years, how unfair they've been. So it'll be great for our country, and frankly, it'll also be great for other countries. And it will be fair, and it will be reciprocal. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. In about 20 minutes after you look at it, okay? We're going to figure it out. You're going to figure that out. Uh, we looked at it a veto. I looked very seriously at the veto. I was thinking about doing the veto, but because of the incredible gains that we've been able to make for the military, that overrode any of our any of our thinking. How concerned are you about the impact of the tariffs on the stock market? And the well, I think the stock market's going to be great. I mean, look, the stock market's way up. When I came into office, the stock market was from a different planet. It's way up. Uh, China is going to end up treating us fairly. For many years, they had free reign. They don't have free reign anymore. We're very friendly with China. We have great relationships with China. And uh, look, it's time. It's time. Last year, we lost $500 billion on trade with China. We can't let that happen. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.